Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to VR News from Chateau Exidy. I know some of you guys have been wanting to see my man cave for a while. Well, here it is. I'm sorry it's more of an office than the cave, but, uh, well, what can I do about it? Right now, I'm just a lot more excited that uh, my bro Epix is back down here on the best coast where he belongs, at least for a few days. Uh, I'd like to say this is going to be a gaming Tuesday, but i um, <laughs> got to be honest here. It's getting pretty late. He's had a pretty long flight, and uh, so I think we better just uh, let him switch over and take care of some VR news right now. Sounds good, Exidy. And we got game in time tomorrow. I'm not heading out till Thursday. Then I resume the hellish drive across North America. Hellish because uh, when I picked up my daughter's car about five minutes into the drive here to Exidy's place, the air conditioning died. So hopefully I get that fixed tomorrow. It's also why I'm uh, really red right now because it's very, very hot. And uh, I'm a central air conditioned pampered type of guy. So here we are. Let's jump into virtual reality news for Tuesday, July 11th, 2017. I'm going to start with the first story, guys. It has to do with the game Gorn. This one is from developer Free Lives. And Gorn takes the gladiatorial pits of Rome, infuses them with over the top comedy, and the end result is basically splatter gore goodness. So let's take a look at Gorn. Now, one of my favorite movie genres, especially on Gaming Fridays with Exidy, has to be Japanese splatter gore films. Films like Tokyo Gore Police, Machine Girl, they've got that magical blend of just enough humor and over the top violence to have you laughing right as the Monty Python-esque anatomy spraying starts. And believe me, there's a lot of that. And lest you think Japan has the monopoly on our combined bad taste, China has some gems as well. For example, the story of Ricky, a movie that defines intestinal fortitude. Ricky, you're all right. Oscar, don't do this to yourself. We'll die together. All right, you got a lot of guts, Oscar. Now, in Gorn, much like the story of Ricky, you start with your fists, but then you leave Ricky behind as you graduate to bigger and better weapons as you progress throughout the game. Now, my two cents, guys, remains to be seen if this type of a game has staying power. Is it going to have the longevity required, you know, for gamers? Depends on what they add. Depends on how they go about. I remember when I tried this a few months ago, it was, it was okay, but there didn't seem to be enough to hold my attention for more than a few hours. Now, supposedly that has changed definitely can't wait to get my hands on this and give it another go and in our next story developer ready at dawn seemingly surprised at the public reaction to their multiplayer open beta for the lone echo multiplayer offshoot echo arena it was originally supposed to run and remember this was the second open beta they opened a second one for it supposed to run till yesterday now they're extending that to monday july 17th which is literally just days away from the actual full release anyway so if you weren't aware of that it has been extended a whole week on top of that now everyone i have spoken to to a person without exception has enjoyed this in fact so much i had to try it absolutely enjoyed this highly recommend this and that is with what they've got now with what they've got planned should be even better now my opinion guys vr needs more games like this we hear it time and time again virtual reality is not good at social virtual reality is not good at multiplayer and yet we can name plenty of social plenty of multiplayer examples that rise above single player experiences in VR. Basically, in my opinion, it's a load of BS, a load of bollocks. For sure, VR can do social and multiplayer. Echo Arena, case in frickin' point. 
And next up, Unity rolling out version 2017.1 with a bevy of feature updates, including virtual reality specific updates, such as the following. In the latest 2017 point update, we've got multi-res shading. This is a rendering technique. It renders images at resolutions that better match the pixel density of the lens corrected image. We've also got lens match shading. This uses simultaneous multi-projection architecture of NVIDIA Pascal-based GPUs to draw geometry only once, then simultaneously project both right eye and left eye views of the geometry. So really caters to the stereoscopic rendering, as does this third one, the real surprise of the bunch. We've talked about virtual reality and SLI so many times and what one of the issues is, which is stereoscopic rendering, the fact that you need to cater to each eye individually. Well, VR SLI, now a feature in Unity, providing increased performance for VR apps where two GPUs can be assigned a specific eye to dramatically accelerate, you guessed it, stereoscopic rendering. Frickin' fantastic and about time. And in our next story, guys, Broom X, looking at the market and determining that there was room for an innovative 360 degree media viewer, such as the MK Player 360. Now there are two versions of this that BroomX has. One is wall mounted, the other is a floor version. The floor version, three wooden tripod legs. The wall version, of course, mounted, capable of producing both of them, what BroomX is calling full HD field of view. It's 180 degree horizontal by 120 degree vertical as well as audio thrown in for what they are calling again a 4D experience. Now, if it seems a little familiar to you, a little, you know, kinetic-y, you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> because back in 2013, Microsoft coming up with Illumi Room, which was where they paired a connect with a projector, Illumi Room using visually augmented space around the television to add a layer to the entertainment experiences. If you're wondering what happened to it, well, no surprise, uh, it went the way of the dodo bird, extinction, and uh, sadly, no more. Hopefully, BroomX doesn't follow suit and go in this direction, and there's enough here with their technology, hopefully, to be innovative and come out with features that allow them at least an inkling of longevity. Now, personally, my two cents again, I put this in the same category as Theorix, in that I love the technology, I love that people are working on it, it's just at a stage in its life cycle where it's not terribly exciting. And I kind of liken it to where virtual reality was in the 1990s with VGA at the time. You had 320 by 200 resolution, 256 colors and sadly it did not do a good job portraying VR and so nothing really became of that and that's not even getting into the discussion of the processing power at the time or the graphical processing power fast forward 20 years later 1080p now we're talking I think it's going to be the same with these guys it's just unfortunate that you know they're choosing to launch commercially before we've gotten to that point where they're really viable at a technical level. And you can't blame them on, you know, the one hand, they want to generate revenue, to become self-sufficient, to continue to improve. But uh, hopefully with the right investments, that's something they can do without necessarily having to launch a commercial project or product at this time. And that is it for the news on this Tuesday, July 11th, guys. Hopefully, you're having a good start to the week. Guys, we will catch you tomorrow again from uh, Chateau Exidy. As always, guys, cheers.